overseers of truth. That's what God's elect are. Okay. That this title falls under bishop, overseer, elder, elect. Is to see something uh, doesn't happen, and that is that out of seven churches in the year 96 A.D., only two. Only two of seven were still holding to the real truth, the real gospel. Five had already gone by the wayside. Still had some good, but they sure had let the truth slide. And what is important is what was that truth? What did Smyrna and Philadelphia still teach? They taught who the Kenites were. And if you're not in a church that teaches those that claim to be of our brother Judah and do lie and are the synagogue of Satan, you're in a heap of hurt. You're shortchanging the people. You've allowed someone to change the word. One of the main messages of the word. The only message that Christ helped and helped up those two churches was the fact that they still believed and knew how Satan had interfered, as people allow him to, into the Word of God. And it's, it is the Word, basically, this is going to be the topic of this message. A lot of people think an overseer, well, I, I'm going to whip them into line. I'm going I, I, to straighten them out. That's not what it's about. If you, tell, if you teach the real Word, it will straighten the people out. You want me to say that again? If you teach the real truth, the real Word of God, it will keep the people straight because troublemakers can't stand the heat. They split. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. Naturally, you have to have discipline. Now, that goes without saying, and it's obvious you sow what you reap. So, uh, along those edges, edges, those things still pertain. But never, never, never take your sight away from what the church was intended for, what it's about. I'll be using two words, episcopos, and also presbyteros, which is to say, it covers all of those names I forementioned, elect, overseers, uh, deacons, elders, it really, when you break them back in the Hebrew, they both mean to feed as a shepherd. Well, what does the shepherd feed? He feeds the sheep, and he feeds them what? What they're supposed to eat. Well, what, what about God's children? What are they supposed to eat? The famine in the end times, as it is written in Amos chapter 8, is not for food. It's for hearing the Word of God. Unchanged, on course, and the real truth that... Uh, here, here's where the big difference comes. If you don't have the real Word of God, your family's not blessed, period. So I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. But if you have the Word of God, both your church, your elders, your election... They're blessed. You can't help growth because people are drawn to truth. So oversee the truth and keep it. Don't let it be hinkied with. Don't tolerate it for one moment. Anything that pulls away from the truth. Christ taught this ever so many times. Number one, remember when the feeding of the twelve, the 5,000 and then later more? And they took up twelve baskets. What did Jesus warn them of? Be sure and feed the people. Be sure and do this. Be sure and do that. He said, no, you beware. When you pick up a bunch of scraps, you beware of the doctrine of men that try to change my word. Okay, that's what he warned about. The doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees, the scribes, which is to say the Kenites had moved into in part... And that's what he wanted you to be aware of. They will take you down Primrose Lane if you allow it. Having said that, open your Bibles, if you would, to Acts chapter 20. The Acts of the Apostle, how you're supposed to act, how you're supposed to conduct yourself, how you're supposed to relate to our Heavenly Father.
Acts chapter 20, verse 26. And Acts chapter 20, verse 26 reads as follows. Wherefore, I take you to record this day. Now, I'm going to call you to account that I am pure from the blood of all men. In other words, old Paul is saying, I have kept myself, my innocency as far as, um, uh, as misleading people. 27, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I haven't held back one bit of the truth. I haven't held back on one word. And I haven't put a bunch of words into it. I've stayed with the message that Christ gave. You see, that's what's important, beloved, this Christ message, because men will, will mislead you. And it may be to get on an ego trip. You know, some, some men, I hate to tell you this, but most, the ladies all know this, men don't sometimes, okay? That some men get on ego trips. <clears throat> you know, and uh, so it, they, all, they will turn from the truth to think, well, this must surely apply to me, therefore I'll be Abraham, or I'll be Abraham's uncle. You know, they're nothing. Okay. They're a teacher of God's word if they will stick with it. And aside from that, we're all the same. Okay, everything is common. Now, uh, he, he says, I, I didn't hold back one thing of the word. Do you understand the subject here is God's counsel, which is the word? Okay, don't, don't, don't get away from that. Verse 28, take heed therefore, that means you be real careful unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit hath made, I repeat, made you overseers to feed. Let me say that again. To feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. This word uh, feed, as it is here, don't don't read over that. It's poma, poi, poi ne, in in the Greek, and it means to shepherd. Okay, to feed as a shepherd would feed. Now you might say, well, why does he always go back to the shepherd? He was the head shepherd. That's why our chapel is even named after him, the Shepherd's Chapel. Okay. Uh, how did he feed? The Word, his Word. He was the living Word. And that's what you feed. Not a bunch of malarkey. Not a bunch of traditions of men. Not a bunch of apple stories. But truth to the Word, whether it be children and or otherwise. You teach the Word of God as it's written. Now, he said, I have made you overseers. And the word overseers is superintendents. To be on guard against what? Well, uh, <clears throat> bad people, divorcees. And, no, he didn't say that. He didn't say that at all. Well, you're not supposed to do this and do that and do something else and do something. He didn't say that. He said, I've made you overseers of the word to see that it doesn't get changed. To see that it's helped true. And again, I would remind you, why was Smyrna and Philadelphia so blessed that out of seven churches, even in 96 A.D., how far do you think it's drifted here in 2005? Teaching the truth, the word, an overseer, a presbyter, meaning, and I'm not mentioning a denomination here, I'm saying a word, a superintendent of truth. Okay. And beloved, you know, what makes this so serious is your brothers and sisters' souls depend on it. Did you hear what I said? Your brothers and sisters' souls depend on it as to whether they make it or they don't make it. It's to hold to the truth and not be deceived. It is so gentle, the truth is. It is so loving. And it is so simple. But man loves to muddy the water with his um, 
linguistic talent. You know, of screwing and messing stuff up. I'm sorry. Okay, he can. They can really do it. Okay, instead of letting God's simple truth flow as it's written. Okay, now um, understand again. I have made you overseers. You are to feed. Not a bunch of malarkey again, but truth. And you're supposed to take the trouble and the time to know what's right and what's wrong. Verse 29, For I know this, you can count on this, I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, want to take it over. They're coming. Um, do you know, understand this for a moment, he well, why would he mention wolves? What, what do wolves feed on? Sheep. They love them little lambs. Okay, they just love to take them little lambs and just tear them apart. Take them on a deep study. Okay, we take these little lambs on a deep study. Okay, not God's word. Okay, that's why He uses the terminology, the term rather, of a, uh, a wolf, because that's what a wolf does. He'll tear up the sheep, and you're an overseer, and you're going to let that happen. You're going to allow people to get away with changing the Word of God? And you're a Christian? I can't believe that. Because you were appointed an overseer, you see to it. It's got to be Scripture. It can't be changed. It will happen exactly as it's written. It always has. And it will always continue so. Verse 30. Also, of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. People love, you know, um, how, how many things people do sometimes to draw a crowd, you know. Butter people up. You know what Satan's main, main clause? I can tell you're a wonderful expert of a person just by being near you but okay and then here it comes okay. so you want to be real careful what's important the scripture what do you say um, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God what does a man's counsel amount to you know, you got a lot of counselors, and I'm not going to knock them or anything, but people are going to do what they want to do anyway. You can counsel them from night till morning, and they'll listen for a little while, but when it all gets through the stringer, they're going to do what they want to. They're responsible for their own actions and the, to teach maturity and to teach people they are responsible for their own actions is the best counsel you can give aside from God's Word. Save yourself a lot of time, okay? And uh, so people will try to change the Word of God into uh, a message that might um, draw away someone that uh, might be a little weak, that is a new student. But you're an overseer. You can't put up with that. You can't tolerate it. Don't let anyone change the scripture. Teach it the way it's written. Believe it the way it's written. You know, if God says a certain thing, if Christ explains something to you, do you need a man then to explain it further? Now, I know there are some things in, in parabolic form that maybe you need a teacher to help with or you need men to discuss with. But if God, if God says through the Son, that plant right there is green. And then you get some men and yes, you see, it's the way the plant grows. It's the stuff that's within it that makes it appear to be green. No, he said it was green. It's green. Listen to the Lord Jesus, not man. Okay? You don't need to interpret further the truth from what God states, okay, but you've all, you're going to always have the wolves that will come along yapping 
and they're going to make you a better mousetrap. That's not to say that that uh, ingenuity is not good and well and all that, but there's one thing in our lives that is fixed, and that's the Word of God. The Word of God is fixed, it is permanent, but at the same time you must recognize it's pregnant. By pregnant, I mean it grows. It grows in clarity and in understanding as you mature and rise to the occasion of accepting the Word. Verse 31. Therefore, watch. Do what? Play around? No. Therefore, watch and remember. Remember what? Don't let someone change the word. Remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. I really tried. I wanted you to remember. I cautioned you. Verse 32, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the Word. Commend you to what? To the Word. What Word? The Word of His grace, which is able to build you up. What is it that the Word does? The Word builds you up. It prospers you. It strengthens you. It sets you aside. Do you know what set aside one is? That's a saint. And I'm, I'm not saying I don't want a bunch of you to get saintly on me here all of a sudden and start playing a harp for me. I would get along well if the harp's fine, but and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. That means set aside. Sanctified is set aside. Because they accept the word for what it is without somebody trying to bring along a bunch of malarkey, fancy the men's lingo, and change the word from what it is. Listen, Christ paid an awesome price on that cross for your salvation, whereby when you follow his word, you've got eternal life. Why would you let some nutcase come along and tell you something different? You know? Uh, you, you know what? You will actually, many of you may know what I'm about to say, and some of you may not. You might even have a nutcase that will come along and say, Brethren, I'm going to present to you the laughing church. <laughs> That's all they do is laugh. What about the word? You know, anytime they're supposed to be overseers of the word and they're all laughing, What's happening there? They're ignorant. That's terrible. What? They're not overseeing God's Word. Now, hey, listen, there are churches that call themselves the laughing churches. I'm, I didn't make that up, okay? It's, unfortunately, it's true. Uh, sad, but true. Uh, you, know, and the, you know, do you see what they did, though? It does your soul and your heart good to laugh, okay? And don't start laughing at me, though. Okay. But real, seriously, it, it really a good, deep belly laugh, just wow. You know, it'll, but that's not church. That's what's natural. If, if you follow God's Word, it will keep you happy, and you can laugh a lot. Okay? You can laugh a lot because it gives you the answers that you need to keep you happy, to keep you satisfied and to keep the food supplied to you that a shepherd would bring, which is truth, God's truth, the truth of his word, giving you a full and a complete life. Okay. Now, let's, if you may, let's go to the book of Peter here for a moment. I want to go to, to 1 Peter chapter 2. We'll pick it up with verse 21. We're just going to dabble here a little bit today in what an overseer is supposed to oversee. Well, I have to take care of the gossip in the church. You know, it's up to me to pass all this around so that everybody knows the bad, dirty stuff. Well, maybe most, uh, at least, you know something I've noticed about gossip in my lifetime? 99% of it is lies. I mean, who wants to wait around in stuff 
You know, that's no fun. Truth is so healing. What a bomb. Verse 20, uh, to, uh, healing bomb is what I mean, okay? And with these terrorists around, you got to be careful how you say the word bomb. Okay, uh, chapter 2, verse 21. For even here and too were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow his steps. When you follow Christ's steps, it's not going to be a rose garden for you. Well, I, what do you mean? I want to live like Jesus. Well, they beat him. They crucified him. What makes you think you're different if you teach the real truth and you really stick to the gospel? There's going to be some people that are going to talk against you. Does that bother you? I don't care what they say. Okay, As long as you stick to the truth and you live your life as you feel comfortable with it, hey, soul of me. Well, that's another language that means shove off cocks and you're loaded. Okay? Don't need that kind of stuff. Okay? That's not quite true. It's hard to get Navy talk and other things to line up, but it'll work. Okay? 22. Speaking of Christ, who did no sin, neither was guile found, found in his mouth. 23. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. He didn't say, well, I'll get even with you. It's just like you, when somebody really uh, says a bad thing about you, do you have to jump up and run over there? No, he, he didn't. You know why? He's going to tell us. When he suffered, he, he threatened not, I, I'm going to get you back for the last thing I do. He didn't say that. Okay? But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Whoa! committed himself to Almighty God, and God carries a big, big correcting rod, staff. Okay. You know what You know what? one of those shepherd's staffs has a hook on it for? It can really reach out there and hook you in, okay? And say, so, um, we're going to the woodshed to talk. Okay. God has a way of doing that. You know, a lot of people say that um, that good people allow themselves to be run over. Don't go that far. Okay, I didn't. That's not what I'm talking about. If somebody comes up to you and you know, the Bible says if if, if someone slapped you, turn the other cheek. But what was the subject? You were supposed to be an overseer of the word, and you got some tender minded preacher that you're trying to teach and you offend him to the point like maybe you tell him you're misleading your people by teaching him there's a rapture Whop! you know then turn the other cheek because you messed up you overloaded his donkey okay he wasn't ready for that and then you know it's your fault but if somebody on the street walks up and slaps you, knock him down. Okay. You don't, we're not second-class citizens. We're children of God. Act like it. Okay. And expect to be treated like it. But oversee the word. God takes care of those things that are so minor and yet can be hurtful if you, uh, if you let your skin you know, get thin, 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 thin. Get, get a thick skin, you know, and know that Christ, God takes care of you. He does. I believe that with all my heart. 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. He took the stripes. You understand they beat him. They were cruel to him. They put a crown of thorns on him that the blood rushed down his face in pain in that hot sun, nailed to that cross, that Roman cross. He didn't complain. He took the stripes. He was perfect. We get to hear him.
when you oversee the word and when you keep it straight when you don't let man change truth and you live it as best you can none of us are perfect uh, never, I've never met a perfect human being in my life about the time well I, I'm going to go there 25 for ye were as sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls in other words I want you to know who the chief shepherd is the chief bishop the chief overseer it's Christ it's his word he paid that price don't let someone change his message don't let someone by, by your own soul allow it to be toyed with stick to the word of God as it is written the word will bless you the word will prosper you the word will keep you out of trouble the word will bring you God's blessings and you know something God's on the throne he's, he's got all the little buttons that he can push on every entity and, when, and he's, he's not bashful to push them okay he can push anybody's buttons he wants. And many might say, well, how would he know? Well, what did he tell Satan? Revelation chapter 9, verse 4. Don't you touch those that have the seal of God in their forehead. Now, do you have it or not? If you've got the seal of God in your forehead, which is this word we're talking about, and that you're supposed to be an overseer of, Satan can't dent your finger. Okay? He can't dent your mind. He can't have any power over you. Quite the contrary, you've got power over him. Because Christ gave it to you. I give you power over not some of your enemies, all of your enemies. And of course that's in Christ's name. Okay? So He is our chief chief shepherd you are to follow his example that's what he's saying here did Christ, what did Christ do did he go around dressing people down now, we don't allow no divorces in here and I'm not uh, I hope anyone there's somebody new here that uh, divorcees can sit right up here front if they want to if they've repented and um, whatever you can sit right here in the front and you're just as welcome you can you can uh, enjoy the full value of the church why? because you're a Christian you repented and you got a whole brand new start in life don't let somebody pick on you what's important? the word don't let someone change it the word says now that I've brought it's going to sound like I'm picking on the boy says, God help them I'm not okay but uh, so, uh, somebody's going to say, well, but what does the word say about it? Repent and you're forgiven. Okay. You've got a new start. That's what the word says. Don't let somebody change it. It cause you to be a hypocrite trying to give instructions that you don't know what you're talking about. Take the whole word, not part of it. Oversee, and the warning is, don't let someone change the word now go to, go to the fifth chapter of this great book of Peter with me first Peter chapter 5 and it reads the elders that's the overseers which are among you I exhort I want to talk to them a minute I want to be real serious here who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed I Peter saw the suffering I was in the crowd the apostles I know how it happened okay verse 2 what does he say to you and he called you an elder Feed the flock of God, which is among you. Were over in, over in um, nincompute? No, he said among you. Be active, in other words. 
taking the oversight thereof. And that, that remark I just made doesn't mean wait till you go off to some way distant land. Nothing wrong with that. Thank God for missionaries. But don't wait till you get somewhere else to teach. Do it to those that are among you. Plant seeds. Got it? Okay. Be active, in other words. Not by constraint. I'm sorry. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. You know what oversight is? That's an overseer. One that, is, that takes charge. Not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre. Don't do it for money. But of a ready mind. A mind that the Holy Spirit has touched. And you feel that truth. And you know the import of it. Uh, you know how that it changes and blesses lives that are lost and broken pottery that maybe has given up. But that truth will put that pot back together and give it hope and forwardness and make an overseer out of it where it becomes accountable to those that he or she is among. Being a servant of God, an overseer of the Word of God, but don't, don't ever let someone change it. Like a wolf trying to steal off sheep. Don't let it happen. Verse 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. You know, this is something that's really important. You know, you got... Well, you don't understand, brother, this ministry is mine. That's why I call it Dodo Ministries. Oh, I didn't know Joe Doe had a ministry. I thought God had the ministry, if you want God's blessings. Well, you don't understand, brother. I am Joe Doe. I understand a lot more than you think I do. Okay. So, be careful. Don't try to lord it over people. You know, you might say, well, I would just like to be important. You are. You're an overseer. You're an overseer to see. You know, many of you have a little grandchild, just a plain little seed. How more important in life could you be than to help your family? You know, that's important. That's fantastic. But don't lord it over. Okay? Do you know what lord it over kind of gets into? That's what he's talking about. Well, we're going to have a bunch of do do's and don't don't here. Okay, this comes first. I don't want you women wearing any pantsuits. I don't want you wearing no makeup. But then you stop and think, Lord, look what they'd look like. <laughs> oh, forgive me, the Irish is cooking. I mean to tell you, I should not have said that. <laughs> I think women are pretty with or without makeup. Right? I really do. But anyway, that's, but isn't that ridiculous? That was my point, okay, is that they bring, you know, I have had people, I have received letters with tears upon them. They said I was going to hell if I had four pantsuits back to church there. That's terrible. God's Word doesn't say that. It says it nowhere. It does say that a woman should not take a man's place in a sexual act. That's what the uh, idiom means. But ignorance is bliss, I guess. Anyway, enough said on that. Don't let people change the word. Don't do it with a, you know, if you study God's word to show yourself approved, you don't need a bunch of do-do's and don't-don'ts. To be an overseer, you do it out of love and not to make yourself feel like you're something that you're not. And that's folly. Do you, do you know what the word hypocrite in the Greek really means? It means play actor. To so just play acting. They're not really an overseer. They're play acting like it. You know, that is important that if you want part of God's heritage, that's his blessings also. You do it his way. But uh, being in samples to the flock, 
Uh, if um, you set them up saying, I'm Joe Doe, they're all going to want to be Joe Doe. You say, children of God, you need to be a Christian, Christ man. That's what you need, okay? Verse 4, they're complete. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall give a crown of glory that fadeth not away. You got it made. That's part of the heritage, okay? Is to be approved by our Heavenly Father. And his, his approval is ever, ever so important. Okay. What I want you to do is turn back to the one of the shortest, one of the shortest, little book of Titus, which really follows the books of Timothy. To make it so short, sometimes you'll go right past it if you're not careful. Right after Timothy 2, you'll find a little book named Titus. Titus means protected, and certainly he was. Titus chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, overseer. Okay, got it? And the acknowledgement of the truth. What is the truth? God's word, which is after godliness. In verse 2. In hope of eternal life. In, I'm, I'm going to correct that a little. In sure hope and knowledge of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. That, that says so much as an overseer of the word that you don't want to miss it. The plan of salvation was set in before this world age ever began. It was his plan and from the first earth age that salvation come forth. <laughs> Beloved, that's why it's important that you be an overseer of truth but do you know something? There are not all that many people in all of the churches of the land that realize there was an earth age before this. And it really makes it difficult on Christians that go to universities doing documentaries. Because the college students will say, what are you Christians doing here in this stuff that's 10,000 years and older? We have a stock answer. We're Christians, and we're here because it's here. We understand. Oh, oh, well, I didn't know that. No, they didn't. You know why? It's not taught. The word's not, it's, a, it's allowed to be changed from the very verse we just read. From It was in place before the world began, three. But hath in due times manifested his what? Do you know what manifested me? He made it obvious, made it visible, made it where you could reach it, you could see it even, with the eyes of your mind. His word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. In other words, an overseer, responsible, be responsible, and change lives. Doesn't you know, and keep it simple. Don't try to lord it over. Um, it, um, perhaps an oversimplification is these people that will drive around with a track saying, Do you love Jesus? You know, and, and, uh, but, I mean, they need a little meat along with the milk, okay? And I'm not knocking anybody. Evangelists can do whatever they want to, and I'm not going to complain about them. Four. To Titus. This is old Paul writing to Titus, you understand. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. So there you have it, the Word, the commandment of God. Don't change it. Don't try to change it. Verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders, that's overseers, in every city as I had appointed thee. In other words, make sure the word gets out there. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, 
not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Don't do it for money. Okay? Now, you see, here's where you people, where you get ignorant people teaching God's Word that you get in trouble. A lot of people are kept from the office of some churches, maybe it's just as well, because they're divorced and they remarried. And they said, you, you can't be a bishop in this church. Now, you've got common sense, okay? If a man and a woman, for some reason, uh, get divorced because one can't stand the way the other opens a package of wieners, okay, and they just really fall out of love and for no, just really both of them, maybe, let's call them sinners. They get a divorce, okay, and then with repentance and so forth, they remarry, this old boy does, or a woman, whichever the case may be, and they're remarried. Now, let me ask you a question. How many wives does that man have that he's living with, of course? One. A husband of only one wife. You know? Now, this makes it hard on certain religions, all right? But that's, that's what it's talking about, and that's the law. Okay? You may not say, well, that's not what Jesus said. Oh, yes, it is. He said without repentance, it could even be adultery. But once you repent, do you realize Jesus has the power to give you a clean, white page in the book of life? A fresh start. And don't you ever let man judge you when Christ has forgiven you. Never let him change the word. Okay. Uh, be that as it may. I'm just showing you how that man can change things. And some people don't stop to think. That sounds like a bunch of malarkey to me. Okay. Uh, verse 8. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, and temperate. Now, we're talking about a pretty good old boy here, okay, or a woman. But, and, and it would be nice if all of us could make it to that point. But no, nobody's perfect, so don't... If you wait to serve God until you're perfect, you're not going to make it, okay? It's like a lot of people will say, well, I, I would like to be baptized, but I still have bad thoughts. So, welcome to the club. That's why you get baptized, to help you get over stuff like that, okay? You know, you, you just... Uh, Christ helps us, that He is our helper. Uh, verse 9, holding fast the faithful word, holding what fast? What does fast mean? It means don't change it. Hold it to your heart. The word as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine, not a bunch of malarkey, by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Can you do that? When you absorb God's word, don't ever get, don't ever have a overseeing job that muddies the water, that makes life so difficult that no one can live in it. You see, God loves His children. And when He makes you an overseer of the Word, He wants them saved. He doesn't want to zap somebody every day. Correct He will if they need it, it's because He loves them though. Just like a good overseer sometimes has to take a stand that the word doesn't get changed and it can get a little bit tough love can be a little rough but it's healing he took the stripes we get the healing okay and um, it will the gainsayers cannot move against the truth verse 10 for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers especially they of the circumcision. That, that's the, unfortunately to say those of the church. Man, uh, that family is really churched. Oh, are they? Well, it's according to whether they're churched in truth or not, isn't it? 
uh, whose mouths must be stopped to subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not for filthy losers. I ill gotten money, okay? Uh, show me a man that teaches. Well, I, I won't go there. Every servant is worthy of his hire, okay? Now, we're here in Titus, and I'm, on the next page back, you'll have Second Timothy. And in conclusion, I want you to go to ta- chapter 2 of Second Timothy, verse 14. Why do you have the Word? Why do you go to church? Why do you study the Bible? Verse 14. Of these things, put them in remembrance. Don't ever forget it. Charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. In other words, a word that will build, that will help, that will strengthen. And and no, you're a child of God. Verse 15. Study to show thyself approved, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Do you know what rightly dividing the word means? It means to take the statement, divided according to the law, the time, who it's written to, and the place. And understand by that a deeper meaning, but yet at the same time, as wisdom always is, is to take that that may be complicated and simplify it whereby anyone can see it. That's true wisdom as an overseer of God's Word is to bring clarity, to bring truth. So do study to show yourself approved of God. That means your Father loves it when you study. That's why all you have to do is say, I need a little help here, Father. Bang. If you're serious, he'll get it to you. All right? Um, uh, One more verse to complete. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. It just gets further and further away from truth, from our Father's Word. So, how do I tell the difference between vain babbling and God's truth? God's truth brings you blessings. God, always remember this, God is not the author of confusion. Anytime something is confusing to you, you better be real careful. It's probably not of God. God is the author of peace. This is why after the crucifixion in the book of John, Christ uh, twice or thrice says, Peace be upon you. That's his message. That's what the word is. It brings you peace of mind in a very, very troubled world. And it guarantees you, not maybe, not perhaps, a heritage in the kingdom because he loves his children. All right, Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for the word, Father. Keep it in our minds, Father, even in Smyrna and Philadelphia. Help that truth and talk that truth. May we continue to teach that truth. Absorb us in thy word, Father. We ask it in Yeshua Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13:23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And and play the pinky toes with some brat that hates him and is disobedient and needs whopped, okay? 
uh, that would just be a little bit unkind for our father to do that. So that's what he said and that's what he meant. As long as they hate him, they've got... Well, first of all, what is sin? And as it is written, sin is to transgress God's law. And as long as they can... To hate God is a transgression. Why? First commandment. He's, he's number one. <clears throat> so don't let that one throw you. Okay, Car Earl from um, South Carolina. Is the devil still in heaven? De facto, yes, he is. But spiritually, he also, his spirit is loose. The evil spirit and the good spirit, being the Holy Spirit, can uh, touch people on this earth. But de facto, he is not cast from heaven yet. Patty from Texas. Someone asked me about once saved, always saved, and I was wondering if you could, could, if you could lose your salvation if you don't repent of sin. Well, if you don't repent of sin, you're going to pay for it. Okay? You will pay for all sins you have not repented of. And don't anybody start keeping a log of all your sins. Just say, I repent for all my sins and mean it, of course. And they're erased. They're not there anymore. They're gone. But um, once saved, always saved is only a true statement in as much as Christ is the Savior. He did not fail. But don't ever for a minute let some preacher, teacher, or quack tell you that you can't fail, because you sure can. You can fail by not repenting. You can fail by not fessing up. And you can drift so far away that you can even get tangled up in a rapture theory and jump in Satan's wagon when he comes to say, I'm flying you out of here. How ignorant can a person be? Well, they can, there'll be a lot of them that'll be ignorant. To be ignorant simply means they don't know any better. Because why? They haven't read the letter God sent them to be prepared beforehand. So, yes, uh, the salvation Christ did for you is always there. But don't let your hands slip away from the, the hand of the Master until you go to hell, all right? Because it's sure possible you could. If, if you deserve it, you'll get it, okay? Uh, but Christ is the Savior. That's what he's in the business of, and uh, so be it. Beverly from Ohio. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 32, is this more proof against the rapture theory? Your comments, please. Well, it's simply, it, it is in a sense, but God is against all false teachers. Listen. If you ever really want to be in a bad place, if you ever really want to be in danger of judgment, be a false teacher. I, I, I'm going to tell you what. Every teacher had better be doing his or her homework, and they better be doing it good. Because what you teach, if it is not accurate, if it is not correct, I would hate to be in your shoes. Because... That's where judgment starts, is at the pulpit. In other words, he judges teachers, preachers, and evangelists first. And they're going to get everything they got coming to them all at one time. Now, what has a false preacher got coming to him? Hell, fire, and brimstone, that's what. And, uh, and it will be quick and it will be swift at, at, at the great white throne judgment. God dislikes false teachers. As a matter of fact, if I remember correctly in, in Jeremiah twenty three thirty two, says I, I they tell you I sent them. I didn't. I just had a little talk with the Lord today. He told me where to park my car. That man's lying to you. A man that's not smart enough to know where to park his car, God don't want anything to do with, okay? Coming out the gate. All he's trying to do is one up and ship of saying, I, I've got it made. I walk right next to the master. Yes, I do. I'm blessed. He's lying to you, okay? Does God answer prayer? Of course he does. A little wisdom, a little common sense goes a long ways. Ken from Tennessee. 
In Proverbs and other places in the scripture, it refers to the fear of God as the beginning of wisdom. Yep, chapter 1, verse 7 does it. Are, are there any places that it refers to having the completeness of wisdom, or is the beginning all that we are able to receive while in flesh bodies? It, the more you study, the more you know. The more wisdom you attain. That's just the beginning. You know, it's a beautiful thing. But, um, uh, you know, um, I, I would like for you to take your strong concordance and check out that word fear. It, it is a Hebrew word that has two translations, revere and fear, and loving God and his word, the word. You, you, you have an appetite for it that just, you're starving. You can't get enough of it, of the truth, of his wisdom. That you're hungry for more truth, for more wisdom, for more knowledge. Then that's to, that's to revere him, not fear. Okay? Uh, Beulah Ann from Tennessee, Beulah Anna from Tennessee. Where is where in Esther is the name I am locked in? Chapter 7, verse 6, and I, I would recommend that you go to Appendix 60. You're dealing with Hebrew manuscripts here, okay? And if you're not pretty sharp in Hebrew, you're going to have trouble finding that, all right? So you need to go to the Appendix 60 in your uh, uh, companion Bible. And it will give you all five times that uh, the sacred name is in the book of Esther. I'm out of time. I love you all a lot. Why? Because you enjoy studying our Father's Word. Most of all, God loves you for it. It makes his day. It really does. So uh, we are brought to you by your tithes and your offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. But blessing God, by blessing God, he will always bless you. But you know what's really the most important thing in your life is to stay in his word every day in his word, even with trouble. It's a good day. You know why? Because Jesus, Yahshua, he is the living word.